the recording. Okay, yeah, let's start. So this is now writing your research paper, starting with the introduction, okay? Let's get away from the old format of our research wherein we have the chapter one entitled background, uh, the background and its setting or the background of the study. Hindi ko maalala nga yung title ng chapter 1 natin last time. This time, we will be using the Imrad format. We will not be placing sa title chapter 1. Diretso na siya, class introduction. So, this morning, I'll be teaching you how to write the introduction of your thesis. But I will just discuss half of the subsections because we have a lot of subsections in the introduction part half only i'll discuss the introduction itself um, making the hypothesis at not that not the hypothesis the statement of the problem and then after that the hypothesis and i've uh, and siguro significance of the study if i still have time so ito yung components or the subsections of the introduction of a research paper so, syempre, the introduction itself and then this followed by the statement of the problem. This is how you're going to arrange the sections how when you're going to write the, chapter, the, the first part. And then the hypothesis and assumption and or assumption depending on the research design and then significance of the study. And then maybe next week I'll be having my discussion with these parts, theoretical and or conceptual framework, the scope and delimitation of the study, and last but not the least, we have the review of related literatures and studies. So again, this is not following the old format. Since the old format class, we have the chapter two, which is the RRL. This time, the RRL is already incorporated in the introduction section. Actually, it's the last part of the introduction. Okay, so let's start with the very first thing that you need to write, the introduction. So from the name itself, introduction, you are going to introduce the problem of the study, <laughs> your topic. Okay, you will be giving your reader a background of what is your what is your study, uh, what is it all about, and your particular area niya. Okay, so you should be explaining what the readers should know about your paper, about your research, and what we are uncertain about, meaning what we are looking into um, the field, why you are studying that. Okay, so kailangan yung i-explain, kailangan yung i-summarize. And you, uh, sa introduction na part, itong asking question may, may also be incorporated in the research question itself ha, sa ano, SOP, statement of the problem. Okay, so everything you write here must relate to your research question. Now, how are we going to write the introduction? So in the introduction, remember, you're going to present your problem. So you may choose one of the following ways to start your introduction. You can have the assertion beginning, quotation beginning, or question beginning. So assertion beginning class, ito yung most widely used way of introducing the problem. You will be starting with an assertion. Example, your problem is diabetes. Ilagay niyo dyan sa big sa star. So example, um, diabetes is one of the most common disease, which is a big problem worldwide. That is an assertion. Okay, ikaw ang nagsabi nun, assertion mo yun. Pa pero, yan yung start ha. Pero on the succeeding sentences or paragraphs, you are going to um, support that assertion. Paano mo siya iso support Through the references na you can get either sa book or sa sa online na magsasabi talaga na yes, assertion is, ay assertion, diabetes is one of the big problem na ini-encounter ini natin. Common na sakit. Okay? Ng mga tao worldwide. 
again, that is class an assertion beginning. Okay? Pwede din namang quotation beginning. So, itong quotation, syempre, it will not be your idea, but you can get a quotation, an idea coming from an author, a person. You're going to quote them, and that will be your beginning sentence. Okay? I'm talking here about the beginning sentence of the introduction. Ha? Or I can see some research class that starts with a question. Okay? Mag-ask sila, and then sila din yung sasagot sa question nila through the, uh, using the body of the intro. Production. But what we're going to avoid when you're going to write the introduction portion of your research is the dictionary introduction. Hindi tayo, uh, hindi tayo nagsusulat ng ganyan sa research. Ito kasi yung hilig ng mga estudyante. Example, their topic is COVID-19. What they're going to do in their introduction is they get the definition of COVID-19 from a source, example, from the website of the World Health Organization, copy the definition of COVID and place it there in the introduction. And that will be their first sentence. Yun yung hindi natin dapat gawin sa introduction. Okay? You place the definition, the description of certain topic in your RRL. Okay? So, dito sa school, most of the time, we start with an assertion beginning. What is your assertion for your topic? Okay, and then expound that in the succeeding sentences or paragraph. Okay, so what are the four ideas that you need to discuss in the introduction section? So, syempre, your topic, it's the subject matter or your problem at hand. You have to um, elaborate, explain your problem. After the, after the assertion, how you can define that or you can elaborate more of about your research problem. Okay? And then, after that, you have to um, establish also the importance. So, you have to explain uh, what your study will give or benefit the community or your target na benefactor or beneficiary. Okay, bakit bakit kailangan natin studyhan ito? Kailangan ninyong sagutin yan in the introduction. Okay? Including the reasons. Ano ba yung nagmotivate sa inyo to conduct that study? So it might be because the certain problem is like a pressing problem in the current situation. So last year, syempre yung COVID-19, no? Kaya maraming COVID-19 na studies din last time kasi it's it's a, a pressing problem of the society and ayun, yung nag-motivate sa kanila kasi maraming nag-COVID, nagka-COVID-19, so they presented statistical data, okay? For their reasons why they are motivated um to conduct that study and the purpose so you have to present the last part of the introduction should present the objectives of the study meaning at the end of re the research ano ba yung makukuha natin ano ba yung um magagawa natin so ano yung aim okay wait lang ha i'll be showing you an example of paper with a good introduction para may idea kayo uh, if after after choosing class the problem or the title after the concept paper syempre magse-start na kayong gumawa ng inyong papel and syempre you will start with the introduction so i'll show you one para we are guided on what to do with your research. Let me just use the one that I can access easily. This is a study from the previous batch, the, the one that graduated this year. Hindi yung mga fourth year. Pero ang tagal mag-load. Oh, okay, ayan na pala siya. Mm -hmm. Uy, 
Tuyok-tuyok na siya. Ano man eh. Loading. Loading. Okay, wait for a minute. I am na siya. But this one is an old paper. I I think I don't know if this has been edited or not, but let's see. Okay. So, ito yung pini send ko sa inyo sa inyo last time din no, na paper. Kasi ito talaga yung ma-access ko easily kasi. So, we have medical fake news and fear mongering during the COVID-19 pandemic, the impact on the vaccine confidence among the millennials. This one is the title page and then followed by the preliminaries i'll teach you also the preliminaries ha? so you have to accomplish this also mga acknowledgement pero syempre ngayon hindi pa naman ninyo alam sino yung mga i-acknowledge ninyo sa research ninyo so wag muna let's skip these parts especially the abstract also since abstract is a summary of your paper wala pa kayong papers so wala pa talaga kayong masusulat sa abstract as well as table of contents and yung mga list of mga appendices and figures, wala pa tayong masusulat dyan. So dito muna tayo sa introduction. So wala na siyang chapter 1 ha. So, uh, diretso na siya introduction. And that is how you write it. Introduction. Hindi yan nakakapital but nakabold. Only the I will be, uh, will be ano, typed as capital. Okay? Now, ito yung kanilang introduction. Their topic is about medical fake news and fear mongering during COVID-19 pandemic. And look at their first sentence for the introduction. The increased rampancy of fake news here says policies and unproven pieces of information during the COVID-19 pandemic is one of the growing public health concerns worldwide. Anong klaseng um, beginning ito? Diba this is an assertion beginning. Yan yung assertion ng mga ano mga researchers sa so, tingin nila uh, it's a major concern worldwide itong pag laganap ng mga fake news and other things okay and then the succeeding na mga sentences will expound na their assertion okay so i-connect na yan nila ngayon Example, with the vaccine, with the vaccine confidence. And as you can see, class, nag-present sila ng mga statistics. Okay? So, depende na yun kung ano yung topic ninyo. Kung ang topic ninyo ay um, about a certain plant that can lower blood sugar level, then you have to discuss like diabetes here. And you may present statistical data about diabetes that's how uh, you establish the reason or or your motivation why you are going to conduct this study okay kasi kasi nga diba sabi mo sa unahan there is increase na naging problem siya so bakit siya naging problem kasi ganito nang karaming tao ang nagkakaroon ng ganitong sakit yun yung i-discuss natin sa introduction that's through presenting statistical data. Okay? Kung babasahin natin yung kanilang introduction. By the way, yung introduction natin, one and a half page, pages lang ha. One and a half lang. Huwag, huwag masyadong mahaba. Ang kailangan nyo lang talagang gawin is to introduce your problem and state nyo yung reason. Bakit siya naging problema? Kasi nga, ayun na, that's how you you answer the question, bakit siya problema? Through statistical data. Okay? And then, after discussing the problem and the reasons why you are conducting this study, on the last part, you may present um, the importance of conducting this study. So, meaning the benefit that we can get at the end, meaning we can also present there the objectives of the study. So, yan yung magiging last talaga na paragraph ha. Na at the end of this research, as you can see, oh, to deal with the threat of vaccine hesitancy, the researchers need to know if fake news and fear mongering affect the vaccine confidence of the millennials in General Santos City. That's their aim. 
at the end of the study, they want to know this information. So, yun yung magiging end din ng inyong introduction pag kayo na ang gumawa. Okay? But do not forget, ha, what you, what you need to include in the one and a half pages na introduction are the problem itself. So, you have to discuss what is your problem. Anong problema mo? Anong problema ng research? Okay? And then number two, the reason why you are conducting this study, meaning your motivation, bakit? Anong problema? Bakit kailangan talagang gawin ito? So you have to establish the urgency of conducting this study. And then you may include the importance also. But actually, we can discuss more of the importance in the significance of the study, na portion or na part. And lastly, do not forget that all introduction should end with the objectives or the aim of the study. So this one is an ideal introduction. Hindi siya masyadong mahaba. But they have actually presented here their problem. Number one, yung paglaganap ng fake news. And number two, yung kanyang connection with the vaccine confidence. Okay? And then, ayun na, number three, they have their um, neto, aim or objective ng kanilang study. Okay? Any question about the introduction? Hindi niyo siya ma-picture out ngayon no? kasi wala kayong topic. But but I hope uh, during the time that you will start doing the introduction, um, it will not be very difficult sa inyo. Anyway, kung nakalimutan na, you may always ask question sa akin, especially ju during our class time, na basig makalimot mo kay dugay pa mo magsulat sa inyo ang introduction, you can ask me for help and how to write your introduction. Now, after the introduction, since konti lang yung introduction, no, we have the statements of the problem. So, sa statement of the problem, you will start with the general statement mismo ng problem mo. Most of the time, it's what you want to know or what you want to achieve in your research. But after that, after the general statement of the whole problem, it will be followed by like specific or mga sub-questions that you are going to answer also through your research. Okay? Hindi ka pwedeng um, mag-include ng question in the statement of the problem if hindi mo siya kayang sagutin in your research. Okay? So again, lahat ng questions na ilalagay natin sa statement of the problem should be answered in the findings of the study or in the result of the study. Okay? That's the statement of the problem. So, ano yung mga questions na pwedeng ilagay natin dito? Well, before that, let's um, ano siya? Let's discuss how are we going to write that first. So, the questions under the statement of the problem should be arranged in the order of the researcher's research design. So, pag na, ano na natin, napili na natin yung research na ipupursu ng grupo ninyo, kung quali ba or quanti, doon din magde-depend yung ating mga questions in the statement of the problem. So just like if your study class will be quantitative, descriptive na research, most of the statement of the problem starts uh, sa pag-ask ng demographic profile of the respondents. Okay? So again, this is true for most of the quantitative, descriptive researches. Their question and their question number one is always about the demographic profile. When you say demographic profile, they may ask about the age, the sex, or the gender of our respondents. Sa questionnaire, ha? the civil status, the income, or the educational attainment. Yan mostly yung question number one. Okay? Now, for other questions, you may also ask questions that will give you answers about the physical, social, psychological, or professional na mga 
problems ng inyong respondents. Depende kung ano yung research topic ninyo. Okay? So, I'll show you examples later also. You may also include other questions may, that may have close bearing with the study on hand. And number four, for quantitative research class, you really have to include question asking about significant difference or significant relationship between your variables. Okay? So, i-include natin yan siya sa statement of the problem. So, ipagpatuloy natin yung ating example a while ago. So, di ba the study is about medical fake news and fear mongering during COVID-19 and yung impact niya on vaccine confidence. So, na-present na nila yung kanilang problem in the introduction. Now, let's look at their statement of the problem. Paano nila simulat ang SOP? This is their SOP. Now, I told you a while ago that all SOP starts start with a general um, statement about the problem. So ito, para siyang last part of the introduction kasi this will still be talking about the aim of the study. So as you can see, first paragraph, the study aimed to determine the impact of medical fake news and fear mongering during COVID-19 pandemic on vaccine confidence among the millennials in General Santos City. That's the general statement. That's what they want to know in their research. But before they can answer this general statement, ang ginawa nila, hinati-hati nila into specific questions. So ito na ngayon yung questions na sinasabi ko. Kaya dito may nakalagay, specifically the study aimed to answer the following questions. So since this one class is a quantitative descriptive study, as you can see, the question number one is about the demographic profile of the respondents. Okay? Kasi we have to establish yung identity ng mga respondents natin. Yung bibigyan natin ng questionnaire and magsasagot sa ating questionnaire. So, ang sa kanila, hindi lahat ng ano ha, hindi lahat ng demographic profile ya ask ninyo. Yung necessary lang sa inyong study. Kung necessary malaman natin yung age yung sex or yung gender, ilagay nyo siya dyan. Pero kung hindi na, naka, hindi na kailangan i-establish yun, pwede nang hindi ilagay, hindi na isali dyan sa demographic profile. So sa study na ito, yung demographic profile na sinali nila kasi they thought na ito yung importante sa study is yung educational attainment, occupation, and family monthly income. So yan lang. Again, hindi lahat. Uh, kailangang malaman. Depende lang sa need ng study. So, ano pang questions na nilagay nila dito na syempre may bearing sa study nila? Ito yung number two. What is the level of influence of medical fake news and fear mongering during COVID-19 pandemic on vaccine confidence among the millennials in General Santos City? So, level of influence. Gusto nilang malaman. Kasi nga, di ba, this is about medical fake news and fear mongering. So, ang una nilang itatanong, ano kaya yung influence ng mga fake news na ito sa kanilang respondents, especially on the vaccine confidence. And since this one is a quantitative research, sabi ko kanina, pag quantitative research, the last question should always be asking about either the significant difference or the significant relationship among the variables. Okay? So, yan yung um, example ng ating statement of the problem. Let's try to look for um, other studies para meron kayong guide ano ng study kaya yun loading ah uh, 
yung kagrupo ni Jebel man. Ay, this is for Ma'am Darling. Sorry, sorry. This is for Jet to Postal pala. Ito. May copy ata sa paper dito. Yeah, they have. Okay. So, this is still class a quantitative descriptive study. This time, it's cap about face mask disposal uh, during COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, let's get away with the preliminaries first. Wala pa kasi tayong malalagay dyan. Pero for the introduction, okay, sa introduction, they still have an assertion beginning that the coronavirus disease outbreak has caused a worldwide worldwide health crisis that has altered people's perceptions of the world and then their daily lives. And then the succeeding paragraph talks about the face mask, the PPEs, and what's the problem? What's the problem with that? So especially the disposal. So they presented actually statistical data also here. Not necessarily percentage, but the number of, like number of face masks that is being disposed in a certain area, ganon. And then, again, the last paragraph will be about the aim of the study. But let us look at the statement of the problem. Just like the first one, the, the statement of the problem always starts with, again, the general statement of the problem. It's most likely the general objective. And then you have to divide that general objective into sub-questions. Kasi broad ito eh. Kailangan nilang malaman yung cup, knowledge, attitude, and practices sa pag-dispose ng face mask. Pero, kailangan natin silang isa-isahin into series of questions. But just like the first study, since this one is quantitative, descriptive, then, nagsistart na naman ito, with the demographic profile of the respondents. Pero marami silang sinali class. Not like the first one, na tatlo lang ata yon. Ito marami. Depende kasi again sa need ng study ninyo. So, sa kanila, um, age is very important in their study. The gender, the educational attainment. So, sinali nila. And then, yung mga succeeding questions will help them achieve this one. So, ito yung ating talagang i-achieve. Pero kailangan natin siya i-break down. So, inisa-isa nila class. What is the level of knowledge? What is the level of attitude? And what are the practices? So, isa-isahin mo yan siya na questions in the statement of the problem. Kasi in the results, magkaibang data sila. Okay, ba iba-ibang data sila, di ba? Separate data sila. So, they should be separated in the questions also. And since this is quantitative, descriptive, then ang ending pa rin is asking either about relationship or significance. Ito, yung dalawang questions na na-present ko sa inyo, most likely nag ask about significant relationship between the variables. Okay, so again, this is true for a quantitative descriptive study. Do you have questions so far? Two parts pa lang yun. Baka may gusto pa yung itanong. Wala. Ay, nangyari. Wala. Um, sino dito yung nagbabalak na mag-quali? Baka may, may, may nagbabalak pa dito na mag -quali. Wala. Quanti lahat. Ah, meron. Sige. Let me show you an example also of a quality research. Quali ha? Wala tayong numerical data. Let's just have linguistic data for the quali. Wait lang. Magpunapun na ako sa study ng quali last time. Let me check. Yung madali lang makita. Hmm. Journey. Okay. Ito. This one. Though this is not really a medtech study. 
but this one is a qualitative research. So let me show you one. Kung yung mga nagbabalak na mag-quali ha. Ito yung example natin sa quali class. Ang title ng study na ito, Journey of Generation X Parents with LGBTQ Children. So again, this is talking about experience of the parents. Generation X na parents ha, na merong mga anak na LG, ay, member ng LGBTQ. So nag-interview sila nito. Therefore, they only have linguistic data, walang numerical data. Ayan, wag muna tayo sa ano ha, sa mga preliminaries. This is an edited na paper. So may mga problems pa with the format ito. Pero like sa introduction nila. Ganun pa rin naman yung sa introduction. They have their assertion beginning. Ito yung assertion nila. As people live in modern world, many things have changed, especially how people view and understand things in such and situation. Assertion nila yun. Then after that, they have presented the problem. Okay? Yung problem is like sa LGBTQ, ano yung experiences ng mga bata, no? Okay. Example, may mga... School is not only the place where these homo homophobic views arise, so meron din sa bahay. Kaya sila mag-i-interview ng parents na may LGBTQ na mga anak. Okay? So, ganun pa rin. Ang, ito nga paper na ito, one page lang yung kanilang introduction kasi they just need to introduce their problem. Okay? So, yung last part still is about the objectives of the study. But, for the statement of the problem, wala, wala, wala talaga siyang yung questions. No? Ito yung pagkakaiba ng quanti and the quality. Sa quanti, kailangan mo talaga isa-isahin lahat ng questions for you to achieve the general objective. For the quality class, yung statement of the problem, pwede nga siyang isang... Ano na lang, yung general statement mismo, yan na yung statement of the problem. So, no need to have sub-questions. So, ito, kagaya nito, the researchers aim to know the journey of Generation X parents with LGBTQ children in General Santos City. Study seeks to answer the grand tour question. Ito na yung a-answeran, isang question, most of the time, isang question na talaga ang i-answer, ang a-answeran ng ng study for qualitative research. What are the lived experiences of Generation X in the LGBTQ community? So, yung kanilang general statement of the problem, magiging yun lang yung statement of the problem nila. No need for like additional na mga sub-questions or mga more specific ba na questions. So again, mas maraming questions tayo when it comes to quantitative research. Okay? You have questions? Wala pa kayo. Maninyo ma-picture out. Wala kayo makabalo sa inyo ang research. No? That is the reason why sabi ko kanina, nagsisecond thoughts ako on I know. Um, uh, am I going to push through with my discussion this morning with this one? Wala pa kayong topic. But anyway, sige lang. I'll, I'll accommodate concerns po hon if meron na kayong research topic. Okay? Ito, assumptions. Um, ang assumptions class, we do not really see this in research paper. But assumptions are actually beliefs of the researchers, okay? Beliefs but not necessarily tested if tama ba or hindi. So that is the reason why uh, we don't really see assumptions in most of the research papers that we have. Maybe merong iba na naglalagay talaga ng assumptions, pero a majority talaga wala na yung assumptions in the research paper. Again, assumptions are beliefs of the researchers that need not to be tested. Okay? So, example of an assumption. This study is conducted on the following assumptions that the doctors and staff will use the proposed system and that the current clinic management is done manually and now requires automation. So, itong type ng study na ito is about making a new system for a hospital or a clinic 
So, nag a ang researcher na gagamitin talaga ng mga doctors and ng staff yung gagawin nila na system and at the same time, naniniwala sila na the, the clinics or the hospitals are actually doing things manually. And then, to ease the workload, they need class an automated system. Paniniwala yon ng researchers. But again, we don't need to test this. And at the same time, we don't really place this one in our paper. Assumptions lang kasi talaga siya ng researcher. Ang makikita natin sa ating paper class is itong hypothesis. Okay? When you say hypothesis, this is an educated guess. A tentative solution to our problem. Okay? But not all researches class ay merong hypothesis. Now, anong kaibahan ng assumption and the hypothesis? Si hypothesis ay kailangang itest if tama ba or hindi. Okay? Ito, educated guess. Ito ha. Yung sa assumption kasi, assumption lang, belief lang ng researcher, hindi natin test Si hypothesis educated, meaning we come up with this idea, we come up with this solution kasi meron tayong mga nabasa. So, meron tayong references for this. Like pag sinabi mong ang tawa-tawa ay good for dengue, hindi ka basta-basta magsasabi nun ng wala kang background. Okay? Walang references, walang sources. So, educated guess yun siya. But, since guess pa lang yun, we need to test if really ta tama ba or pwede ba talaga ang tawa-tawa for dengue. Yan yung ibig sabihin ng hypothesis. Now, we have two types of hypo hypothesis. The null and the research or alternative hypothesis. But, take note na sa research natin, sa school, ang nilalagay lang natin sa paper is itong null. Okay? Null lang ha. But you should know the difference. Pag null class, we are denying the existence of this attribute or significant relationship or significant difference, difference between the variables. Therefore, the null hypothesis uh, will be stated in the negative form. So, example of a null hypothesis, there is no significant difference between the efficiency of male and female radiologic technologists in the hospital laboratories. Remember, um, educated guess ito. Okay? Pero the null is stated in the negative form. Meaning, uh, dinideny natin ang existing existence ng difference. Example nitong dalawa, babae at lalaki ng mga rad tech sa hospital in terms of their efficiency in their work. Pero pag alternative hypothesis, ito yung sinestate natin in the positive form. So we are affirming or confirming the existence of something, Exist the existence of a relationship or a difference between the variables. So, ano yung example ng ating alternative hypothesis? The same na ano, the same na thought ha, pero anong pinagkaiba? This is in the positive side. There is a significant difference between the efficiency of male and female radiologic technologists in the hospital laboratories. Okay? So, yun yung um, examples ng ating hypothesis. Let's uh, try to look uh, for examples again. Now, yung qualitative research class, take note, pag naisipan yung gumawa ng qualitative research, wala tayong hypothesis for this. After the statement of the problem, wala tayong hypothesis. So, look at this paper. This is an example again of a qualitative research. After the statement of the problem, diretsyo na tayo sa significance of the study. Okay? Kasi when you are talking about experiences, we cannot really have a guess on what experiences ang um, na-experience ng mga participants natin. Okay? So, wala tayong 
pwedeng hypothesis na i-test for this. Wala hypothesis testing for our qualitative research. Okay? Kasi hindi mo naman ma-check kung tama ba or mali yung experiences nila kasi experiences nila yon In terms of phenomenological research, ha? But for quantitative research, ayun yung merong hypothesis. Balikan natin yung example natin kanina. Padal mag-load. So just like this one. Ito yung example ko kanina, di ba? Ito, sure talaga ito na may hypothesis. This is a quantitative descriptive study and therefore we have numerical data here. Ano yung kanilang hypothesis? It's a guess. Ha? It's a guess. Ano yung guess nila for research? Yung magiging outcome ng study. Yun yung giniguess nila. Kaya lang nasobraan akong pag-scroll. Nabot na ko sa RRL. Okay, this one is the hypothesis. So, ito yung statement of the problem, ha? The hypothesis will come after the statement of the problem. And take note, we are only using the null. So, ito yun. There is no significant relationship between medical fake news and fear mongering and vaccine confidence among the millennials in General Santos City. So, wala daw pagkakaiba. Yung aim ng study, para malaman nila yung impact no, ng fake news and fear mongering sa vaccine. Pero pagdating sa null hypothesis, since null ito, we are denying that relationship. Na wala man palang relationship itong fake news and fear mongering and vaccine confidence. Ito, ito yung test nila in their research kung tama ba or mali. Okay, please take note, ha, null hypothesis ang nilalagay natin sa ating research. And lastly, before we'll end, ito yung fourth um, subsection in the introduction of a research paper, the significance of the study. So from the name itself, significance of the study, we are trying to Identify here the benefits that we can get in your study. Now, how are you going to do it? First, you have to identify who are those people or who are those group of people or organization na magbe-benefit sa result ng iyong study. So, you, you really have to identify. Kung marami, wala tayong problema. Actually, dapat at least seven yung ma-identify natin na mag, makakakuha ng benefits sa study natin. After identifying them, you really have to state that particular benefit that they will get from your study. So, this one is an example. Significance of the study. Study aims to contribute to the following people or group of people. So ito yung na-identify ng researcher. Example, pharmacy students, faculty, researcher, higher education institutions. Ito yung lahat ang magbe-benefit. And after that, you will really state anong benefit yung makukuha nila. Okay? Isa-isahin nyo yan in the significance of the study. And please take note of the format. Ha? This will always be the format of the significance of the study. Nakabold ang pangalan ng beneficiary followed by a period and then idudugtong nyo yung statement of the benefit that they can get. And naka-indent yan. Yan yung ating magiging format. So dito muna ako mag-stop with the introduction. Putulin natin siya. Kasi marami tayong um, ano, section sa introduction. Ayun lang muna, isa-isa muna kasi hindi ko siya gustong hindi ko talaga siya gustong pagsabayin na no? masig malibog na mo and hindi niyo pa nagagawa yung introduction na abot na ta sa RRL. So, isa-isa muna. My goal is next week you will have a research topic and then right after the selection, 
magsa-start tayo with the introduction. Introduction muna. That's our goal. Ipapolish natin yung introduction ninyo and then mag-move on tayo with the other components. Kasi kung sabay-sabayin natin itong lahat, wala na nagkalibog-libog na ang tanan, hindi niyo pa alam paano. Though I believe you have ano, um experience sa paggawa ng research sa inyong high school life, pero um since this one is a group activity, siguro dati yung pinagawa sa inyo yung introduction lang. Dati yung ginawa ginawa ninyo yung theoretical framework lang. Pero this time I really need you to study and learn how to write all of these components. So, establish natin isa-isa lang para dili sa malisang magbuhat o research. Ito yung problem ng research class. Ayaw ng mga estudyante ang gumawa nito. Ang iba na to trauma. So, isa-isahin lang natin. But for the meantime, do you have questions or clarifications? Mula pa ni, pagsugod ani sa research, daghan na kinig pangutan na, sure na yun na Anyway, so karon wala sa I I understand that I I will be accommodating your questions next time pag meron ng research. How about sa concept paper ninyo? Baka meron kayong gustong itanong. Kasi you will be graded individually sa concept paper. Let me 